everyone. Welcome to this taste challenge. Uh, I see some people are already here. Oh, by gosh, by golly. <laughs> I Okay, hmm. explanation. I did this, the uh, Johnny Walker Red Label versus Johnny Walker Blue, which was long. I mean, a little too long, but uh, it went very well, like expected. The Blue Label won, but I don't know if it was $200 better, right? No. Max Walt. Hello again, Ron. Hey, Max Walt. So then I was putting my bottles in order. I always like to put my bottles in order about what's going to be done next because I like everything just so and so. So I said, oh, let me see what scotch is going to go up with James Fox. Then I looked in the scotch cabinet and I realized, oh, right. I had forgot. I had forgotten that I had put the Seagram's VO in there because I, I was so crowded in the Canadian whiskey area. And then I was thinking I had run out of Seagram's VO. I was like, you didn't run out. You just put it in the overflow. Oh, I just couldn't get over it. I say, well, you've done it now. Now, I could have just put it on the side. I said, I'll do it later. But the problem is I'll forget. You see, I'll say I'm going to do it later, and I'll never get to it. I said, no, I got to do it now. So I just used the slot from May 1st. So the May 1st slot, May Day. <laughs> Comrades. <laughs> <laughs> so for that slot, I said, I'll just do the um, Canadian whiskey. And I realized I've got about 20%, um, it's probably set 15 to 20%, probably more like 17% of the bottle left, 16%. Um, <laughs> Craig Swenson says, hello, hello, <laughs> hello to you. Now, I would assume that the Seagrams would win. No age statement. I mean, you can look it up and they'll have some evidence, some evidence that it's probably a six year age, but no definitive evidence. I'll give you an example. Let's look up Seagram's B O Walmart. We can get liquor at Walmart right here. I know some some states you can't buy liquor at a grocery store. You have to go to a liquor store. And people will ask me sometimes like, what liquor stores do you go to in Louisiana? And I tell them, well, well, in my area, there really aren't liquor stores. Now in some parts of Louisiana, some parishes, other states have counties. They're restrictive, so they'll have liquor stores. But in this area, I mean, any grocery store or gas station is going to sell liquor and they're going to have sequence VO. That's a guarantee. Well, let's see what it says right here on Walmart's website. Mm -hmm. Try to find it, the bottle I have. Here we go. Seagram's VO. Now, we don't know what VO means. The company never did release what it meant. Some people said it meant very old. It really wasn't very old. Um, or it was like a something to do with the family, like very, I don't know. It doesn't matter, but it, we don't know. We don't know what VO means. People have been trying to figure that out since 1911 when it hit the market. Let's see what it says on here. And Walmart isn't coming up with their own copy, okay? They're not sitting there saying, let's write a good statement. No. Nah. No, 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 no. They're getting sell sheets from the company. You know that. I know that. The American people know that. Know that all they're doing is posting it on their website. Simple as that. Here's the quote. Enjoy Canada's finest whiskeys with Seagram's VO Canadian whiskey. Perfect on its own, like today, or mixed in a cocktail. Try it with cranberry juice, club soda, and pour over ice for a refreshing cocktail. Includes 180 proof, 750 milliliter bottle of Seagram's VO Canadian whiskey. Makes sense. One bottle. Uh, Seagram's VO is the result of 140 years of integrity, tradition, and distilling craftsmanship. We, I like how they write this, we take pride they left that out. So whoever put this on Walmart's website was typing it by hand. You can tell. We take pride these core values. It should read, we take pride in these core values that were instilled by our brand founder. <laughs> our history, our meaning whoever owns the brand at this current time, 
of premium quality and smooth flavor distinguish Seagram's from other leading whiskey brands. <laughs> Rich and full-bodied aroma blended with fine Canadian whiskeys. Warm, satisfying finish. 80 proof, 100 years of integrity. Fine whiskey. Uh, let me go to LCBO, Canadian, can, uh, the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. And they're going to have the same. They're not going to sit there and write this stuff up on their own. Let me see if uh, Walmart has James Fox, just for curiosity's sake. James Fox, Walmart. Walmart has an incredible amount of brands, but they they be sold different regions. Oh, I don't think that's a whiskey. I think that's some other product. Right, probably some kind of like hand cream. <laughs> it's not spelled the same. Nah, it's it's a book. British Art in the First World War by James Fox. <laughs> oh well. So never mind. L C B O. Oh. I know they don't sell that in Canada. What am I saying? I forgot to <laughs> Oh me. Seagram's VOLCBO. Ah, there we go. Seagram's VO whiskey. They use periods, VO. But actually, the label doesn't use a period. It's a VO, like bo. Seagram's VO. Some people might think it's called that. Seagram's VO. I haven't heard anybody say that, but some people right, probably think. $27.75 a bottle. Jack Cottrell, good morning, Jay. Good morning, Jack. Tyler Mansell says, clink in the mugs. Hey, Tyler, look. Craig, New Hampshire has liquor stores on the highway, 39, uh, 90 state, 93 north, and interstate, 93 south. Oh, that's where you get off the rest area, and it's still on the interstate and they have yeah i've seen those kind of things they have that in new york too and in florida but not in louisiana seagram's vo 27.75 a bottle oh my goodness it's 16 dollars in louisiana 16 dollars. the vo stands for very own their very own but i don't think they actually know that but they're maybe they got a sell sheet maybe the company relinquished uh since they don't own their own company anymore okay very own Sounds very, it sounds very plausible. The VO sounds VP. Very own stands, the VO stands for very own and was first released in 1913 to celebrate the marriage of Thomas Seagram. Well, I know that's not true because it might've been released in Canada in 1913, but I have a bottle of Seagram's VO gold and it says on the label, introduced in 1911. Pretty sure the company knows when they reduced, released their own product. A blend of more than 20 whiskeys. Johnny Walker Red was 30. 20 whiskeys. It off, it pours a brilliant golden amber color, yes, and offers aromas and flavors of dried apricot, hazelnut, and a touch of vanilla. Uh, yeah, I don't believe that. Balance and smooth. Yeah, should have a comma there. Balance and smooth it. Balance and smooth it. Balance and smooth it. See, grammar is important. Balance and smooth should read comma. It finishes dry with delicate floral notes. And I thought their website gave an age statement, but mm. 750 milliliter bottle, 40% alcohol, made in Canada by Sazerac of Canada. Okay. Okay. Don't know the age statement. I used to see where it was six years, but um, I don't know. I don't believe it. Jack, VO is $16 in Michigan. Yeah, same price here, 16 bucks. $27.95 in Canada? No, no, no. No. Okay. Remember, this is a makeup or a preemptive, uh, a preemptive taste challenge. May, May 1st. 
right? You won't see anything on May 1st. I mean, you might see a beer review that I had recorded days before. You ain't going to see a whiskey taste live taste challenge. He said, here's James Fox with, like Craig said, the best looking label ever. <laughs> it is a great looking label. It's got the Fox. It's so basic. James Fox, brown, cream, gold, and this orange band that makes it look three-dimensional, like there's depth inside, like, like there's a, you could reach inside. It's like the monolith. You're going to go into the monolith like um, David Bowman. But this isn't full of stars. All right. Um, and brown bottle, that's what you want. Brown, 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 brown. Brown, 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 brown. Oh, yeah. I got enough for four more taste challenges. Oh, yeah. I'm sure this web, this email address is no longer good. Seagram's at consumer-care.net. Because it's probably a, a Sazerac. But I bought this back in the Diageo days. Seagram's. 1857, that's when the company was founded, not this brand. Uh, Canadian whiskey, a blend. Over 140 years of tr integrity, tradition, craftsmanship. Now the bottle will say 150 years. Product of Canada. Uh, okay. Canada's finest. Well, I'm sure people would disagree with that. Some people would agree with it. Some people love the yo. That's right. It's one of the top selling Canadian whiskey brands on earth. We know what the number one Canadian whiskey brand is. We all know that. Crown Royal, which was also started by Seagram's. So James Fox and Seagram's VO are cousins. They were both started by the same grandparent, Seagram's. 1911, 1975. Canadian whiskey with natural flavors. It doesn't say blended Canadian whiskey, but you know it is. It just said Canadian whiskey with natural flavors. I think the law actually is that it has to either say blended Canadian whiskey or Canadian whiskey a blend. Doesn't have to say that. Sometimes, sometimes I think these things slip under the radar of the U.S. government. If you call this number, 1-866-729-3722, 1-866-729-3722. Three It's very helpful. They'll tell you on the phone. You won't have to wait. I mean, it's not like people are calling them all day. They will tell you where to buy each of these brands if you can buy it in your area. Believe me, I have called them numerous times. They told me where to buy this. I went there. It was there on the shelf. One liter, $8.99. $8.99 for a liter. You got it. And then Winn-Dixie had this for like $16, but I got it cheaper because I had one of those Diageo rebates. Like if you bought two bottles and they give you a whole list of brands, not just like this. Could be like 20 different brands. If you buy at least two and 50 bottles, you get $8 refund, something like that. That's a deal. You'll get your money. You might wait six weeks, but you're going to get your money. You're going to get your money, Maury. I already did the seven chimes. Sorry, that's 10. That's bad. I screwed it up. Man. I can't get it over. Okay, this one is straight gold and it's clear and it has nice little alcoholics. And it does live up to the price. Let's be honest. You want to be cheap, be cheap. Buy some off the wall Canadian whiskey that nobody ever heard of. And it'll be, but it ain't gonna be like this. Cause I mean, I can cruise around and find Canadian whiskeys in a 750 for, oh, 599. Like Canadian Crest from Sazerac, <laughs> same company, <laughs> but sold at Albertsons. But it ain't gonna be a, okay. So there we go. Nice looking, huh? The world famous Seagram's VO. The 
the world not famous James Fox, the rather obscure James Fox, little darker gold. No age statement. I think, therefore, but I don't know. I think this is six year aged. There are some liquor store websites that'll say six years. And they probably got it off a sell sheet. So I don't know. There is no age statement on the James Fox, but you just know it's three years because that's the minimum. And this is a minimal product. But it's been performing way above its price point because I thought it was going to start getting beat. It hasn't lost a single contest, has not lost a single contest. Oh, well, well, yeah, a lot of them were draw, a draw, like neither one was better than the other, and I couldn't tell them apart, but still didn't lose. And when you're paying $8.99 a liter, a tie is as good as a win, right? If you're paying $8.99 and it's going to it's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a $20 bottle, it's like a win, you know? I mean, it's like college football when they used to have ties, which they should have never gotten rid of. I hate the overtime. But... um. You know, you'd have a team like Tulane, and they'd be like, have four wins on a season. You know, they're not going to a bowl game, struggling along. And they might play a team like um, Maryland, who is ranked number number 18 in the country, got one loss. They say, this is an exceptional year for the University of Maryland Terrapins, and they are looking to secure a major bowl win, uh, I mean, a major bowl invitation and perhaps an ACC championship title. Struggle in Tulane comes to um, wherever that town is on US Highway 1, just north of Washington, DC. Taking on the Terrapins, Tulane last played Maryland in this stadium in 1973, suffering a rather ignominious defeat. You know, and then, but then it ends up in a 17-17 a, a, a tie. And you're like, wow, I can't believe Tulane tied Maryland. You know, they were going to get killed. They were a 12-point underdog. So you may as well say it's a win because they weren't even expected to compete. And everybody's talking after the game like, did you see that 89-yard run? I couldn't believe it. So that's the concept we're dealing with. Okay. I've been to that stadium, Maryland State, not to a game, but I, I was driving down the, the highway. And it said University of Maryland. BYRD, Bird Stadium. So I drove back on the campus and I could see the stadium. And I said, oh, it's one of those dug into the ground. Like the upper deck is the lower deck from the road view. You know, like you say, it doesn't look big. But then you realize the first level is in the ground <laughs> and the field is way below the roadbed. Kind of like Northwestern uh, University in uh, Evanston, Illinois. Believe it or not, we have some stadiums like that in Louisiana. Not this part, but Lafayette, Lake Charles, it's dug into the ground. Um, <clears throat> smells like teen spirit. No, it smells like whiskey. Just standard, kind of basic, a little wood. Oak, oak barrels, a little bit of char, and we want to emphasize the adjective little, a little bit of char, but rye, yes, mm. rye whiskey. They blend rye whiskey in, rye high wine. They call it rye high wine. You wouldn't be able to drink it on its own. It's like super high proof, but they use it for flavor, and then when they bring it down to 80 proof, it's all in there, you know. And I would say some bready barley whiskey, malt, what they call in Scotland, single malt whiskey. Yeah, I think so. Notice I didn't talk about color of uh, flavorings like almond or rum, or um, I didn't talk about brandy or sherry wine. Mm, must be the VO, because VO does not exemplify those flavorings at all. Or not really. Let's go over here. Oh, ha, 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 how you feel played. 
how you feel played. How you feel played, how you feel played. Well, all the flavorings, the sherry wine, the white rum, the brandy, the American bourbon, and if it's from Buffalo Trace, no, it ain't using Pappy Van Winkle, 18 year aged, and James Fox. You know that. You know that. I know that. And the American people know that. It's probably something like ancient aged, ancient aged, ancient age, or um, I don't know, Barton, or Old Charter, something like that. Uh, rye, yeah. Oak barrel, yeah. <clears throat> Some kind of like dried fruit, like really dry, almost like Paul. It's like they took um, um, apricot and they dried it so much that they made like apricot powder, pulverized ultra freeze dried apricot or not freeze dried or whatever kind of dried. Oh. Mm -mm. Corn, corn, uh, corn whiskey, anyone? You know that, this, you, know, you know this thing about 80% sweet corn, corn liquor, corn, column still corn alcohol, but it's not bad. It's not like off putting. Mm -mm. If you see it for eight ninety nine a liter, buy that. Just buy it. Just buy it. I gave my friend David a bottle, three seventy five. You know, a half size bottle that I got for two ninety nine. Two ninety nine at Savannah Discount. No, no, Discount Depot. Discount Depot. I was like, "What'd you think?" He said, "It was okay." But the, he described some other Canadian whiskey. Well, that one was better. I said, I'm not saying a word because I gave it to you as a gift. And I'm not, I wasn't doing it to fish for like a positive compliment for it. I said, you got to call it the way you see it. But I wasn't, I, I don't know. I thought he was, I don't know. All right. Too hard on it or something. But he liked the Hunter Pipers. He said, that was way better, you know. I said, well, it is actually good. Actually, very good. <laughs> That's another story for another day. Off topic, I understand why you stopped doing them, but I like the in-store reviews. It was cool to see what was on the shelf behind you. Yeah. There were many reasons to stop. And actually, none of the reasons were revolving around the store didn't want me doing it anymore. The only thing they ever told me was, you can do it. So, but I stopped in 2016 because A, there was a lot of noise in the store. They're working, they're doing this, doing that, calling on the intercom. So it was really impractical. It was really difficult. Secondly, the floor cleaner would just insist on coming down the aisle when I was doing it. I was like, wow, you could do the whole store and come back here later. But he would just, I think he was doing it to, on purpose just to make trouble. I don't know. I couldn't get it, but I was really irritating. And then a lot of people would try to prank. Like they knew I was recording, they would scream out on purpose, just to disrupt it, which is funny, you know. But and then those coolers are very loud, and with these very sensitive microphones I've got on the newer cameras, they'll pick up anything. So I, I just said I'm going to stop, and I did. And plus, I didn't feel like going over there that early in the morning. I just didn't feel like doing it. I was like, man, I got to get all my stuff together. I got to bring the camera. A couple of times I went over there and forgot something. I had to come back over here. It was just a drag. But it was fun to actually do it there. He wanted that camera time. He was on camera once or twice, barging through. I was like, wow. Wow, man. And I never meant for it to be forever anyway. It went from 2012 to 2016, so it wasn't like a short little time. KJ Comedy, if you had to pick one whiskey to drink, which one would it be, Ronald? Oh, that's an impossible thing to answer. I cannot answer that. It's like beer. People ask me all the time. 
if you could only drink one beer, what would it be? I just don't know. I really, I, honestly, I don't know. I'd like to give an answer. So it'd be, I could, everybody could say, look what he said, but I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I swear. I don't know. If I did know, I would tell you without hesitation. I had no reason not to tell you. A VO could be a choice. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks for a reply. I'll drink the Ice House all day, says G Mac. Oh, yeah. I drank Ice House too. I love Ice House beer. I've loved it. I love Ice House ever since they fixed the World Series in 1919. I liked it since it hit the market. Well, since I tried it in 96, three years after it hit the market. I always liked Ice House. Taste time. I mean, I know it's VO. I mean, I knew when I smelled it. It's so obviously Seagram's VO. Why? It's just got like a totally knowable flavor. Oak. It's just oak barrel. Vanilla. I don't know about all these other flavors they're talking about, but um, there's obvious nectar. Like a honey, I'll say honeysuckle. That could go along with the flavorings. There is some vanilla, honestly. There's a little rye spice, a lot of corn, but that's subdued. It doesn't scream corn whiskey. The single malt, what you call that in Scotland, but in Canada, the malt whiskeys do bring in a lot of flavor. And it may have bourbon added. could be like um, whatever bourbon they use for the, the Seagram Seven Crown, something like that. It's really nice. When I first tried it, Years ago, like in 2016, I thought it was dull. I got it from the Knights of Columbus. They let me have a little bit. They didn't care. Take a little. They don't care. So I deleted the video, but I reviewed it and I said, it's bland. It's so bland. And then I was thinking later, I said, you know, maybe it's me. It's not the whiskey. It's me. But how could this thing be so popular around the world? And I'm saying it's so bland. It's probably like I don't get what it's about. I don't have the maturity or the self, like the response of, you know what I mean? Like the interpretive sen sensual. And when I say sensual, that means your nose, your eyes, your mouth, your ears, your touch. A lot of people use the term sensual, but what they mean is sensuous. Sensuous is like a woman, she's like sexual and you're like, oh man, that's sensual. Sensual just means you're using your senses. But a lot of people are sort of uh, like quasi not literate. And so they'll even write that in the TV guide, this sensual movie. I was like, what is it about? Somebody uh, hearing banging on like some metal, metal surface and they thought it was somebody breaking in their house. Like it doesn't mean anything. It's like they're using the term inappropriately. Doesn't, they're not using the right terminology, but this is an essential sense. You can pick up a lot of unique and intricate little qualities, but you can't pick them up if you're rushing around like you're got some great thing to do. So that's why I don't rush through these because you need to take time. Oh, comments. Specifically from the bottle, yeah. We get bottles here and cans, but mostly bottles. I always have mostly bottles of ice. I always have a bottle of Evan Williams and some natural ice. Sound like two good choices. A lot of people mix their whiskey. Yeah, like most people actually, I think 99% probably, 95%. I like your open mind, says Jack. <laughs> Thank you. A blind guy reading Braille. Okay. All right. It's very demure, and I've used this terminology before. It's a demure product. You're not going to appreciate it if you're in a rush and you want the next big thing. Like, oh, man, I tried this new bourbon. It's, it's Agent Oloroso barrels, and I it's age 29 and a half years, and I, my friend Fred told me about it, and I bought it at a local store, and I had to request it, and it was $79.99, and um, blah, blah, blah. You know, it isn't that. It's so bold. It's 137 proof. It's barrel proof. It's really, it's really exquisite and enlarged my mind. It's not going to be that. 
It isn't. It's not that. Th it's it is definitely not that kind of thing. OK. It's may it's a mass. It's the who the doors Fleetwood Mac. David Bowie, you know, it's like a major, the Beatles, Rolling Stones, it's that. It's not, you know, in into battle with the art of noise. I love smoky whiskey, says Flippy Gat. I like it too. Pappy Van Winkle, I'm sorry, I can't see where they got their prices from, Ron. Pappy Van Winkle, well, I don't have enough experience with that. I've only tried little samples. It seemed very nice, but I wasn't a... It didn't seem ninety dollars a bottle. Nice, I don't think so. All right, so that that's the VO. It's it's just a classic twentieth century whiskey. You get you understand. And I don't understand why people rip and rant and rampage about Canadian whiskey. They got people I talk to. They say they'd rather be run over by a truck, rolled up in barbed wire and and drowned, beat with whips you know, be forced to watch every Walton's episode from 1980 and 81 season, then drink this Canadian whiskey. They, they say that's how bad Canadian whiskey is. And I'm like, well, I think it tastes all right to me. You know, it just tastes like, like sort of well done whiskey, but I know you're a newbie. I'm not really a newbie, you know, but <laughs> so flavored. <laughs> this thing is just like screaming. It screams sherry, rum, flavorings, which is the rum, uh, the, the, the plum wine, port wine, Madeira wine. Uh-oh, maybe. Nutmeg, nutmeg. Yeah, like a little spices, little spices and the, the fruitcake fruit. It's very flavored. Um, I don't know how you feel about that. Question, are the flavorings used to mask harshness from a young whiskey that's using cheaper than average ingredients? Oh, that's probable, possible, perhaps. I don't know. It's It could be. I don't know. But they're very pleasant flavors. There's even a little nougat, you know, like in a Three Musketeers bar. Nougat. And I swear, even some powdery chocolate, like uh, cocoa powder. Amazing. $8.99 a liter, you get all that. True story. Wow, I can't believe it. I mean, I can believe it because I'm drinking it, but it's something else. How's the cost of living down in southeastern Louisiana? Here in Northern Virginia, it's insane. I bet our alcohol prices are higher as well. I think the cost of living in southeastern Louisiana is much cheaper than most places. Now, if you go into the city of New Orleans, oh, well, of course, it could be very expensive. But that depends where in New Orleans, where, right? You say, well, I'm going to live on St. Charles Avenue on the streetcar line, 20 minutes from the French Quarter. Well, then you better find $700,000 laying around the house for a smaller home. All right. But if you have some ability to compromise, then you could buy a nice house with a fairly large yard in New Orleans for literally not much more than $100,000. Now it might be under 13 feet of water one day, <laughs> but uh, you could still do it. And this is true. I know, I check prices and I know what I'm talking about. And it gets cheaper as you get further away from downtown. I see prices all the time that will boggle your mind and, and inexpensive. Is they have, there's a lot of excess housing here. There's a lot of glut of housing. And we're not talking about places that are dilapidated and need a total renovation. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about places that are ready to move in. Ready to move into. Hello, sir, says Ronnie. 7,000 for a smaller home? 7,000? What are you talking about, 7,000? Did you type the wrong thing? Commonwealth states are all high, says David Cassidy. I think I love you. Um, I 
I live in Pennsylvania. Oh. Commonwealth. Um, which one do I prefer? Well, if you want to be technical, I thought you said 7,000. No, I said 700,000. I said, if you want to live on the streetcar line on St. Charles Avenue, 20 minute walk from the French Quarter, you better have $700,000 laying around the house to buy a small home with very little yard, if it has any yard. Seven, no, I said 700,000. Ability to compromise, got to love it. Hey, Ron says, enjoy the decline. Hey, hey, enjoy the decline. All right, so let's wrap it up. In my case, I prefer the flim flam whiskey, you know, flavored. It's flavored for the kids. But I'm a kid at heart. I just like these intricate flavors. Is it to the quality of the VO? Well, Probably not. I mean, the VO is like pure whiskey. You know what I mean? They don't need flavoring to get it where it needs to go. It's like the real thing. It's like Coca-Cola. It's the real thing. So Coca-Cola today ain't really the real thing because <laughs> they use high fructose corn syrup. But um, it's too woody. It's too much of an oak barrel, which is actually a benefit. I think they're both really nice. I think VO is worth the price point. It lives, it, it's worth the $16. Pay the $16, okay? If you've never had Seagram's VO, just pay the $16 and buy the bottle. Don't feed the dog from the food from the table. Just get it. A hat? Okay. What is the next ice beer you plan on reviewing? I really enjoy your ice beer reviews. Woody, what are you picking up off the whiskey? The PD, et cetera. Yeah, like Ronnie said, Woody. I, Dixie Ice, right. Dice, D-Ice, D-Ice, Dice. Hadn't seen the Dixie Ice yet, Dice, but I got a funny feeling it's going to show up tomorrow based on no evidence, just a feeling. Like Paul McCartney said, a feeling down inside. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, everybody had a good year. Everybody let their hair down. Everybody pulled their socks up. Um, I mean, but if money is your issue, and that's oftentimes a serious issue, especially with the national socialism, COVID idiocy that we're living under in your, our, our house arrest existence. And I don't want to start on that. But um, not that I've been following the protocols by any stretch of the imagination. I haven't been following the letter of the law, neither the spirit of the law. <laughs> That's a new ice beer. Yeah, it's called Dixie Ice. Dice. D Ice. Karen Hill. Karen Hill. I need a hit. Want to see helicopters? I'll show you helicopters. Woo! Base Trump finally giving us national socialism. Trump? Okay, um, yeah, Dixie Ice is a brand new beer from Dixie Brewing Company, D Ice. Look at their website, they've got it showcasing it. I still live my life the way I want to. Forget fear, the fear war. I'm at war with the fear war. I was telling somebody, I said, two weekends ago, we ate, a week and a half ago, we ate at a restaurant in Baton Rouge, not from a restaurant. I say, mark my terms. I always use these words very carefully, drinking or not. I said, we ate at the restaurant, not food from the restaurant. Now, I know somebody's going to say, what restaurant? Because they'll probably call, I want to report somebody. I was like, yeah, right. I'm going to reveal my source. Yes. Yeah, so I'll wait for that to happen. Um, this better say, this better be the VO or I'm going to, it is the VO. Yeah. Right. All right. It's so obvious though. I mean, from the first snifferoo, like beer hound would say, Hey, Ronaroo, the first snifferoo, it was obviously VO. 
All right. But I'm very pleased. I'm very actually I'm very pleased. Trump the socialist. Well, yeah, okay, I'll go along with that. Not that that was anything to oppose even before COVID, you see. But you got to take into account he's been fighting against the extreme Marxist-Leninist attitude from most of these people, you know. So give him credit. I don't think he wanted to go along with any restrictions at all. He should have gone with his gut. I think his gut was to just say, we're not going to shut anything down. We'll take the hits as they come. Keep the economy rolling, you know. Keep the mother rolling. You know, I think that's what he wanted to do. But he let himself be pressured by these evil scientists. You know, I was a bartender and they furloughed me to March 6th or on March 16th. I'm sorry to hear that. Trump is trying. He isn't a socialist. So I think he just literally did not know how to battle these people. Georgia and Northern Florida have been opening up. These are good signs for me. I think so. Did you ever try Hennessy? Yes, I've tried Hennessy. I, I reviewed Hennessy, Hennessy Black, and Hennessy uh, VSOP Privilege. I did taste challenges. Hennessy is a fabulous product. I know it's expensive, but it's worth it. I mean, it really lives up. I mean, yeah, you're buying the name, everything. But it really, it really does live up to the price. I mean, it's awesome. Hennessy is so perfected. It's flawless. There's no flaws. And then somebody will say, well, I don't like brandy. Okay, what does that have to do with the fact that it has no flaws? I had Pap's Rainier beer last night. It was good, says Tyler. Rainier. Yeah, somebody sent me some. It tasted kind of off to me, though, but um, I would revisit it. I had the Olympia. I got cans over there. Olympia Dry included it. Olympia Dry. Oh, that was a really good product. They were trying to obviously compete against Sapporo Extra, uh, Super Dry. <sighs> okay, that's it. I, this These videos go too long, but people keep asking. Oh, man. Damn. I spilled the whiskey. That's irritation to say the least. Uh, I guess I'm too hard on myself with the length of the videos. I'm like really paranoid about the videos being too long because um, I hate watching long videos, even though I do watch them all, you know, but um, <clears throat> I guess people are at, at under house arrest anyway. They got nothing to do and they may as well watch drinking videos if you want to call them that. Why am I pouring more? Because I spilled some, okay? I don't want to cheat the, uh, the, the, um, I don't want to cheat the universe, whatever they say. All right. <laughs> Let's go back to the comments. No flaws in the Henny. Oh, right. It's like pinpoint a, a, a list. And I plan to try more Hennessy products. Believe me, the first three was the start. It was not the finish. Have you ever tried the Club Tales Margarita? Ronnie says he has many times. We want to chat with you, Ron, says enjoy the decline. Well, I'm here. I'm here. You made him spill the whiskey, says Ronnie. No, I did that. We enjoy your company, Ron. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> and enjoy the decline, says laughing out loud. Save your toilet paper for this spill, Ron. I oh, just use a towel. And then I rinsed it. I didn't have to waste paper. You know, um, dish towel. Try pulling a, well, I love these flavors. Try pulling a six-pack carrier out of the trunk just for a bottle to fall out and bust all over the driveway. Think that's bad? Watch my video for the uh, Bourbon County Stout 2017. 
where it was snowing. I said, oh, I can't wait to get home. I was at work, right? I can't wait to get home because there's snow. It was like we had the heavy snow. Louisiana doesn't get heavy snow, not this part of Louisiana, but once every 20 years, right? So it was like everything was white. It was snowing. It looked like uh, New Hampshire or something. It was cold. I didn't even care. You know, I was like, I'm going to sit on the porch. I'm going to have this Bourbon County stout and it's just going to look great. Snow everywhere. You know, it's going to be great. So uh, <laughs> watch the video. It's still posted. I, I said Bourbon County stout 2017. I think cost me $10.99 a bottle. $10.99 for one bottle of beer. I popped the cap. I said, here we go. And it slipped out my hand. You know, when it gets really cold and dry, your hands get like slippery. And as soon as it dropped, I was like, there's no way I can grab it. I'm like, I'm thinking all this. And I said, I cannot grab it. And I know the porch is concrete, concrete. And I'm watching this brown bottle of Imperial Stout descend and it hit the ground. Bam, it shattered into like a thousand pieces of glass. I said, damnation. <laughs> I just could not believe that. I mean, I could believe it because I watched it, but I was so disgusted. Well, yeah, I went back and bought another bottle. So I was like, literally, I took 1099 plus tax and set it on fire. Oh, what a disaster. Jump into another review. This is fun, says JK. Does Dave? No, I'm not going to do any more reviews. I'm going to post a review we recorded the other on Easter Sunday, actually. We did so many beers that day and whiskeys. And I was disc I was actually upset that he, he brought the four roses. I was like, oh, no, we got to review that just because it was the volume. And I, I felt sick to my stomach that night. I was like, oh, I feel sick. <laughs> but um, I'm going to post as soon as I get off of this, I'm going to start up uh, down. What do you call it? Uploading, uploading uh, another video review we did. We did the Corona Familiar, which he liked a lot. He liked a lot. I like it. And then we did um, um I don't know. We did so many. I, I, I got to look it up. We did one, one another, and another. It's just like endless. It did end. Does Dave prefer beer over liquor? Oh, yeah. I mean, he drinks beer like they're going to outlaw beer. But I do, too. But anyway. But um. I rarely see him do liquor reviews with you. Man, if you knew, if you knew what I knew, you would never ask that question because <laughs> I don't know. Go to the hot rod shop and hang out one Saturday night. You'll see. But they have a good time, you know. But anyway, that is a very sad story, says Flippy Gat. You know, it's a disgusting story. Oh my, oh my gosh, I have to see that video. Go ahead and watch it. It's sickening. My father used to call dish towels tea towels. Tea towels. A lot of Louisiana people call them dish rags, but I don't like the word rag. It sounds like some old filthy, I call it a dish towel. You know, it's nice. It's clean. I wash them every week and super hot water. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I used to like liquor more than beer, but now I'm a beer guy. I get wild on liquor. And this is a very dangerous thing. I know some people that Well, <clears throat> liquor, beer, uh, you know, I'm talking about brandy, cognac, brandy, gin, rum, whiskey, vodka, especially. They're pretty nice people. You know, like you hang out with them, talk to them. Everything's cool, you know, but they'll start drinking liquor. And they are crazy. And there's a guy I work with. He says, Spanish people, they are crazy when they drink. This guy I work with. I said, what do you mean? He said, oh, my uncle, <laughs> he said, we was drinking, you know, they're from uh, like Nicaragua, you know, he said, we were drinking the other night, man. And my uncle started drinking, uh, what was he drinking? Tequila or something. I was like, okay. He's like, yeah, we were having a good time, you know? And then my uncle was like drinking, you know, he's drinking the tequila and they were like, Hey man, you got to stop, man. He was like, no, no. And they said, his uncle's like, I don't know, like 58, 61 years old. And then he was like, mm. he said, he started acting crazy, you know, was talking crazy. And they were, they were like holding him back. It was like, no, no, man, no, you can't do that. He was like, no. And he said, his uncle was like, no, no, no. 
and everybody was like trying to calm me down and like the women was crying and stuff. And I was like, I said, didn't you say it was like a birthday party for some child? He was like, yeah, but they are crazy. And he, this is a, a guy from Nicaragua. He's saying his direct, his direct quote. He's from Nicaragua. It's not my quote. He said, quote, Spanish people act crazy when they drink, unquote. He said, that's all the time. You know, they start drinking liquor and it's like, come on, man, you got to stop. And it, it's like bad. <laughs> My mom would use her tea towel to clean up her liquor spills, okay? And this is it. JK says, you have to learn how to drink liquor properly. You have to sip it slowly. Yeah, I think these people get totally out of hand, you know, like my uncle. Here's an example. Not my uncle from birth, you know, blood, but marriage. Cajun, Cajun last name, you know, like swarthy looking, you know, black hair, kind of like wavy. Kind of Latino looking, you know, French guy, probably from uh, his family. If you took his family tree, you'd probably go back to what, Marseille, France, somewhere in Provence, you know, some Mediterranean area. You know what I'm talking about? Can't never get a sunburn. But when he would start drinking, like they would drink gin, rum, gin, liquor, gin, beer, gin, rum, whiskey, schnapps, like for Mardi Gras, like, what are you doing? And then later on, he'd be like, they were like, come on, come over here, come over here. He's like, no, no, don't touch me, no, no. And I'll be looking at that like, why do people do this, you know? <laughs> it's like insanity, you know? But um, it's just their kind of way, you know? His brother Henry used to, his brother Henry used to catch shrimp in Lake Pontchartrain. But, yeah, it's the party shot mentality that gets you. You sipping it would help, right? Okay, that's it. We got to stop. People are having a good time. You know, it's a hangout. Liquor on the front, po poker in the rear. Liquor in the front. Oh, all right. Liquor in the front, poker in the rear. Okay, yeah. But these are people I know that are not children. These are like 30-something years old, 40-something years old, 60-something year old. KJ says, drinking liquor like a gentleman takes time and experience. That's what I'm worried about with corovidity, you know, corovidiacy, because we've got all this free time, and I think people are staying at home and they're drinking a lot, but I don't know about it like a gentleman, you know. I think it's bad. It's potentially very bad. Then you see crazy stuff happening, people disguised in their car like a cop car. And dressing up like a cop and driving around Nova Scotia shooting people. I'm not saying that's directly related to COVID. You see, I'm not even saying it's indirectly related. I'm just saying there's a lot of people that are not particularly mentally tough. And so when you have these kind of things going on, like COVID lockdowns, they crack up. You might say, well, they were going to crack up anyway. They were deranged to start with. I believe that. I know that. But they were like a smoldering flame, that a smoldering wick that maybe would never erupt into flame. But these kind of things, they just, their deranged mentality, their violent deranged mentality gets sparked off. I think, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just think these are not good, good things. Okay, last it last that's it. I gotta go heat the pizza. <laughs> heat the pizza. Hashtag heat the pizza. I know a few alcoholics that have relapsed due to losing their jobs and being stuck inside. Oh, that's a terrible comment, but it's probably true. I drink mostly with a great cigar, says Dave. This is way better than watching the television any day. Well, I I would I would agree with that. I never get to see his live reviews because I'm doing landscaping in the day. So this is a real treat for me, says KJ. That's a good job landscaping out in the sun, breathing fresh air, very light, very uh, much lower chance of contracting a virus probably. How can you increase your chances of getting a virus? 
staying inside, isolated, breathing in, air conditioning, sitting in a room depressed in the dark with a bunch of other people sitting in rooms in the dark in a complex. Yeah, that's a good way to get a virus. Bad, A good way to defeat a virus, being outside, sun. I got all my windows open, every window in the house open. Sunlight, vitamin D, breathing fresh air, not breathing air conditioning. Yeah, that's the way to live. Don't believe the lies. Seagram's from Costco handles what? A $15 handle? Oh, that's, that's almost unbelievable. That's almost like beyond belief because the cheapest you would ever, ever see it in Louisiana would be $19.99 for a handle bottle. VO, $19.99. Cheapest ever. Ever. KJ said, that can't be true. Once I saw Gibson's finest rare for $9.99 for a glass corked bottle, real cork, real wood cap, aged 12 years for $9.99. I believe anything now. When I saw the uh, Shivas Regal Pabiki, Japanese oak aged for $17.99, I believe anything now anything mitsunara the mitsunara mitsunara yeah shivas rigo mitsunara japanese oak aged it's fifty dollars a bottle fifty dollars a bottle i got it for 17.99 true story after that i believe anything no, it ain't no mistake. That's not a mistake. That's the reality. All right. Well, anyway, thanks for watching this long video. It was fun. It was a lot of great comments. Great comments. Great viewers. Or he switched the labels in the store. Nah, come on, man. You can get great deals. I don't know about your state, but in, in Louisiana, I, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, I can get great deals. I can get Evan Williams. I can get... Evan Williams bottled and bond for $12.99. Bottled and bond 100 proof for $12.99. I am not joking. You're welcome and y'all take care.